Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Church of Religious Science here in New York City. We're thrilled to have you join with us today on this very large Zoom call. I want to give a special welcome to everyone who's watching on Instagram, Facebook, X, uh, and Spotify, on any and all of the social platforms. We're glad that you're here and or we're glad that you're listening throughout the day and the week. Um, We're glad there's such a huge gathering of like-minded people. This is the Church of Louise Hay, Raymond Charles Barker. Uh, With Louise Hay, this is where she served as a practitioner, where she shared her wisdom and learned her healing techniques. Uh, We meet every Wednesday evening for our Creative Living series at 7 p.m. And every Thursday, I facilitate our Louise Hay self-healing group, uh, which has been meeting Uh, weekly for many, many years. And again, Sunday morning, uh, as we are right now. Uh, Everything that we do at the center at First Church is offered on a love offering basis. Um, There's no formal charge for any of our classes or gatherings. We know some of you will want to support the work we do because it allows us to reach far and wide all over the country, all over the world. So for those of you who feel moved to support uh, the work, We have provided support options for you in the chat. So just look to the right and uh, several times throughout the uh, broadcast, we have uh, these options posted. So we appreciate anything that anyone does. Uh, And there's also options for support on any of the social media platforms. Today's subject, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about the profound topic of God's will what that means, what it doesn't mean. This concept can feel elusive, (laughs) or it can also seem mysterious, but it's central to our understanding and the practice of new thought, new thought principles. So let me take a stab at a definition. In new thought, God's will is not seen as a predetermined plan imposed upon us, but rather as the unfolding of our highest potential in alignment with divine principles. As Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science, taught, God's will is always for our our greater good and never for our detriment. So Holmes said it again this way, God's will is always for our greater good and never for our detriment. It is the natural expression of the infinite creative intelligence that seeks to manifest through us as joy, peace, health, and abundance. Again, you can think of it as a natural expression of the infinite creative intelligence seeking to express through you as joy, peace, health, and abundance. Remember, each and every one of us has this incredible um, activity, this spiritual activity within us. We are one with it. So let's look to Ernest Holmes first. Ernest Holmes emphasized that God's will is synonymous with the law of life. So when you think of God's will, you can think of the law of life. Holmes said God's will is that we should all be happy, well, and prosperous. This aligns with the idea that the divine desires for us to express our highest selves, our best selves. Our own Louise Hay taught that by aligning our thoughts with our affirmative thinking, aligning our thoughts and our beliefs with positive affirmations, we align ourselves with this very universal will. She believed that every thought we think is creating our future. And by thinking affirmatively, we bring ourselves into harmony with the divine will. Again, Louise suggested by thinking affirmatively, we will bring ourselves in harmony with the divine will. If you go back to our textbook in the glossary, uh, Holmes will say it's the time, the art, the method. Ridding the negativity, the, the negation within us so we can live affirmatively so we can bring ourselves into harmony with the divine will. As we get into this topic today, as we explore it, 
let's open our hearts and our minds to the possibility that this will is not something to be feared or to be resisted. This will of God is not, again, something to be feared or in any way resisted. It's a loving, guiding force. It's always leading us to our greatest good. Spirit within woos and guides. Each of you is a magnificent expression of this divine will right now. We've made so many wonderful discoveries uh, as a human race, right? Uh, with science and the knowledge that's uh, exploding throughout the world. We've made discoveries in science and medicine. I want to point out the universe doesn't will any type of sickness or disease of any kind. Uh, reflecting on historical examples of human achievement in places like medicine, I'm reminded of my early youth where one of my cousins had polio and he had to wear braces. And that was the disease that was utterly feared until Jonas Salk and his team of scientists developed a vaccine. Salk was an American virologist and medical researcher, and he worked tireless, tirelessly for, I think it was seven or eight years, with his entire team to find a cure. It was a huge program involving many hundreds of thousands of people. Before this, polio was considered one of the most serious public health problems in the entire world. Apart from the atomic bomb, America's greatest fear during those years was polio. I'm talking around 1955. And Salk was hailed as a miracle worker. Remarkably, he chose to give away the vaccine without patenting, getting a patent or seeking any profit. Thanks to his selflessness, that disease has been virtually eliminated from the United States and much or most of the world. This was a true demonstration of God in action through human ingenuity and dedication. Since today's talk is on the will of God or God's will, let's explore where some of our ideas about God's will come from, at least historically. Many of us come out of what uh, we'll call the Judeo-Christian uh, system to some degree. Most of the world religions will come from out of that system. The Old Testament is the foundational faith for Judaism Christianity, and Islam. I'm aware that younger people on the call may not feel that they have any affiliation with any of it. Um, so let's take a brief look at this old system because many of us or our parents were uh, shaped by it. As we study God's uh, will or God's word in different scriptures, we see how it was provided or delivered in various circumstances. Sometimes it was delivered with miracles, as with Elisha and the widow, and sometimes through individuals like Esther. These, in these instances, there were answers. Um, they were given answers, uh, uh, but these answers today, to us in the twenty twenty in the twenty twenties, seem distant and far fetched. We wonder how can we access or have God respond to us in a personal way. First, let me say in this teaching, we have a very powerful prayer process in affirmative prayer. Our teachings suggest that our affirmative prayers are always answered, not just, but not always in the way we might wish. I'll explain this a little bit more. So let's go back to the ancient Jewish scriptures. In Exodus 34, uh, it's written, Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. This particular passage reveals a God who is merciful and abundant in love and compassion. Prayers are answered not because of our deeds, but because of God's boundless grace. And then we'll go to Romans 9, echoes the sentiment. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. But 
Do we believe really that we can compel God to act in our behalf? Historically, again, many religions teachings implied that prayers like the prayer of Daniel were answered with divine intervention, such as angels battling dark forces. These kind of stories or narratives have deeply influenced the entire Judeo-Christian perspective on prayer and divine will. However, today we understand that our spiritual practices, whether reading sacred texts, praying, attending services, tithing, or serving others do not guarantee divine intervention in any way. We don't receive answers to our prayers simply because we've been good or we've followed religious rituals. There isn't an anthropomorphic God keeping score of who's good, who's bad, rewarding the righteous and punishing the wicked. So here we are in the 2020s, and it's time to transcend this old, this archaic thinking. These churches have largely closed throughout the world. Um, if we want to have personal empowerment uh, and experience the kingdom of God, uh, we're in the right teaching. Experiencing joy in heaven is possible here and now. That's really what Ernest Holmes was always teaching. Again, he wanted you to have a direct experience of the divine, which he would say is at hand. It's within you, operating through you as you. Jesus was the first one that we are aware of that revolutionized spiritual thought by declaring the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here, it's now. This was a radical idea at the time highlighting an imminent, he was highlighting an imminent power within everyone, accessible at all times. Each of you have this power within. It's your birthright. You're an individualization of God life. You're the whole bit. So we teach this too. Same idea that Jesus was presenting over 2,000 years ago. The kingdom, the spiritual realm is present here, now, in you, operating through you and you have the power to engage with it. We have the power within us, and our teachings suggest that we can use it. We encourage students in every single gathering to take the time to go within, be still and know that you are, yes, God, be still and know that you are, God, take a pause, learn to take a pause. Louise would say deep at the center of your being is this infinite, Thing, this infinite well of love. So take a pause as often as needed, whenever possible, to engage with this inner power, knowing that it's always there and always responding. Take a moment to breathe deeply and affirm, affirm with me, I am a beloved expression of the divine. I am aligned with highest good. I trust in the process of life and find peace within. I am open to the guidance of the infinite wisdom within me. I live a life of purpose, love, and divine awareness. As we explore and as we develop deeper understanding, uh, all kinds of things are revealed to us. And new thought, understanding God's will, involves recognizing our capacity to align within align with divine principles. In 1980, I embraced an adage from a 12-step program, which has rung true for me, rung true for over 40 years, when they said, our higher power, our, the universe's will for us is to be happy, joyous, and free. So that one worked for me for a long time. It still does. The, universe, the universe's will <clears throat> for me is, is to be happy, joyous, and free. Ernest Holmes beautifully articulated that suffering is not God-ordained. So if we're suffering, it's not of God. There's no will of the universe for us to be um, suffering. It's just the opposite. The will of the universe is for us to thrive, uh, to express. We suffer. The creative power never suffers. Uh, I loved reading Emerson when I was younger. Um, <laughs> he said, you know, Get your bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. And the universe is there um, laying in smiling repose. It's just waiting for you to uh, 
it, you know, wake up and uh, it's always there wooing you, attempting to get your attention. Misery is optional. Ralph Waldo Emerson portrayed the universe again as lying back in smiling repose, inviting us always to recognize that all is well. And indeed, all is well within each and every one of us. So we want to learn to let go and realize once again that all is well. You might imagine Louise Hay saying it because she said it often. I trust in the process of life and all is well. As I was putting these notes together, I've shared this before. When I was younger, I used to hang out at a restaurant um, that was run by the Krishna monks. And there was always chanting, Hari Rama, 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 Rama Krishna, six, seven different words, contemplating the idea of a higher power. Uh, each word symbolizing God in the presence, the presence. Can you imagine spending all day allowing yourself, your consciousness, to be continually enveloped with the idea of this divine source, this boundless presence? I can, and I thought, these people must be entirely living in a state of bliss. So we have an opportunity to practice the presence in our teaching, too, and to embrace this understanding of God's will. God's will is not about fear. It's not about submission to anything. It's about realizing our highest potential in living in harmony with divine intelligence, living in harmony with the intelligence that seeks to express through us as joy, peace. Yes, it wants to express through us as peace, health, and abundance. Can anyone believe that there's still an external God that punishes or rewards people? I hope not. One that favors one over another? Is anyone still hanging on to that? Does anyone believe that there's a God, God that will allow some to suffer and some to live uh, and heal? No, I don't believe anyone here in this New Thought group would believe this. But many in the world do think this way. They think this way still. Prayer is more than seeking miracles on demand. Again, prayer is much more than seeking miracles on demand. In a study of religion and anthropology among primal people, you'll find that many believed in magic. They believed in that supernatural forces could be controlled or supernatural forces could be influenced and manipulated as they would execute ritualistic, rituals, ritualistic formulas, either physical or verbal. How many times, <clears throat> and I, how many times are we asked to pray for someone when you find that they're ill? And certainly, when you're asked, you pray. I pray for people when I'm asked. Um, we all do affirmative prayer. Most of us do affirmative prayer here. I think it was Raymond Charles Barker, our first pastor, who said he would rather teach a person how to pray, how to do affirmative prayer, so that they can have a direct experience of themselves. You see, that's really what this teaching is about. It's about you learning uh, that you have the power, and so you can have a direct experience, so you can have healing, so you can have transformation personally. We've never taught you to be dependent upon the practitioners or the ministers. It's the teaching. It's working and practicing the teaching yourself. So we're always happy to do affirmative prayer for you, treatment, and teach you, more importantly, teach you how to do it yourself. Um, it's our pleasure. There's no God out there that's going to answer prayer in the way most people in the world want prayer to be answered. It doesn't work that way. No matter how good I might be, or any of our practitioners might be, our prayers have little effect on other people unless there's a, an open receptivity to the prayers. So it might be better to think of the universe as a loving system. We're all spiritual beings. We live in spirit. We move in spirit. We have our being in spirit. It might be better to think of it as a loving system, creative intelligence, a benevolent process that responds to you as an individual to the degree that you align yourself with its aspects or its nature. As you become more loving, 
more whole as you adopt attitudes and ways that exhibit more trust, more passion, as you open up channels within yourself to receive the gifts of the universe, you'll have them. We go to practitioners for practitioner work when we're in doubt or when we're having a tough time seeing the truth about ourselves, realizing the truth about ourselves. Our staff, our practitioners are here to teach you how to practice, how to do this teaching, so you can have your own demonstrations. You have the power within you to heal your life. Louise Hay wrote the book, You Can Heal Your Life. There was a time when people were dying from polio, and the ignorant would say they're dying, and it was God's will. But along came Jonas Salk, who, and outwitted what people thought was God's will. So we want to be very careful uh, and say we don't believe it's the universe's will for anybody to suffer. Personal prayers for healing did not really help the people who were dying back then of polio before Jonas Salk. So let me ask, what's the nature of prayer? It's not, a mag it's not magic, nor is it participating in ritualistic formulas aimed at placating and influencing distant gods, nor is it about becoming a better person. You can't get better. Your worth is already incalculable. You can't know the value of the person sitting next to you, much less know the value of yourself. You're an individualization of God life, a spiritual being, priceless, each and every one. Your worth is incalculable. You are one with source itself. You're an aspect of it. You are a divine idea within the very mind of God. Mature prayer enables us to gain the kind of faith described by a Hosea Royce, who wrote, Faith is the discovery of a reality that enables one to face anything that can happen to one in the universe. And that's quite a definition. Mature prayer, again, enables us to gain the kind of faith described by Royce. One more time. Faith is the discovery of a reality that enables one to face anything that can happen to one in the universe. Mature prayer seeks to enter into communion with the divine mystery. Yes, where you take that pause and you go within. Mature prayer seeks to enter in communion with the divine mystery so that we, we might find a source of strength and we'll discover that it's within us and it's beyond us. It's a spiritual bridge, the fusion of the infinite with the finite, the calling forth of the divine mystery within you to commune with the divine mystery beyond you. It was George Washington Carver who, when asked why he never prayed, said, my every moment is a prayer. So you can see why he never prayed, because his consciousness was imbued with the idea that my every moment is a prayer. He was always practicing the presence. We live in God awareness here. That's what our teaching is all about. Or we certainly aim for that. We practice it. We keep bringing ourselves back to the holy instant, to the point of power, which is always in the present moment. We live in God awareness here. But that's certainly what we aim for. At its loftiest, prayer becomes contemplation. You're contemplating the divine. And as you do, it's an act of adoration towards the mystery within. And that, comes, that opens you up to the wonder of life itself. It simply says, O oh, presence within, before whom all words just slip away. You have that within you. So... As we draw this lesson to a close, let's remember that understanding and aligning with God's will is not a burden, but a path to joy and fulfillment. It's about embracing the infinite possibilities within and living our lives in harmony with divine love and wisdom. So let's take a moment to breathe deeply and affirm with me 
I am a beloved expression of the divine. I am aligned with the highest good. I trust in the process of life and I find peace within. I'm open to the guidance of the infinite wisdom within me. I live a life of purpose, love, and divine awareness. And so it is. Now let's transition to our, our, um, our Zoom call to a time where uh, you can share your thoughts about God's will. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to connect and support each other in our spiritual journey. I invite you to share your insights, your experiences, or reflections that uh, you have in today's subject. We'll take a few minutes. Uh, we allow a few minutes for each and every one. Uh, I'd like to hear from people who are new, at least to say hello. Remember, prayer is living every hour of every day absorbed in God consciousness. It's about maintaining that divine connection, practicing that presence, allowing the presence of the divine to guide you, to woo you, to uplift you. Thank you all for being here today, each and every one of you, and your willingness to explore these deep and transformative ideas. So let's continue to support each other in living our highest truth and embracing the divine within. So now let's hear from each and every one of you. Thank you.